Okay, Walter. Um, I've decided to engrave the outer dial. I mean the outer dial. I'm sorry, outer dial. Uh, I got I got word fumble this morning. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what's going on here. Um, I see we got a little light glare there. Maybe I don't know what to do about that. Does that help? Yeah, that might help a little bit. Also, uh, let's see, I'm kind of missing out here. I gotta get over a little bit. Okay, move the light up. I don't know where to put it. I can see it. Anyway, that's what's going on. I I worked with Cam Bam this morning because um, for some reason. Yesterday, the Kanban file was actually going over some of the lines more than once. And I got the feed rate pretty slow, so um, that wasn't good. It was taking a, a lot longer than I would have liked to get the job done. As it turned out, it wasn't that much. And I looked at the dial this morning, and it looks, uh, it looks to be pretty good. I don't see a problem with it. But I may redo it anyway because I'm going to need a sample eventually uh, to test some other processes, some other parts of this process. So I don't know what I'll do. But right now, the hour dial is the easiest one because it doesn't have all the segments on it. The other dial has 60 segments, this dial only has 12. So that part of the procedure, um, you know. It takes less time. So this would have been a good dial to start on, but I guess it didn't make any difference. It was all going to be a test anyway. So, um... I'm using a, um, a number one center drill to do the engraving. Um... I have some engraving tool bits or carbide. That's one thing I don't like. I'm I'm afraid of snapping off carbide in these soft metals. I think that's part of my problem with the brass. In so you know high speed steel, I I feel more confident with. So um, that's what I'm using for this process. I got to change the the tool bit three times because. Um, uh, this this only works for the engraving, and then and then I got to switch to an eighth inch end mill to uh, to cut the center hole and cut the outer perimeter. This is a four inch piece of aluminum, four inch diameter, so I need to cut it down to three and a half inches. So um, I'm just letting this run. I'm putting my voiceover in here, so um, I'm just going to let this run out. I think this is only going to take about uh, less than 10 minutes, so maybe then if I actually publish this video, I'll, um, I will, uh, I'll fast forward through the, the other part. Uh, cutting the perimeter, I got the feed rate going pretty slow and the depth of cut pretty shallow, so that, that takes, uh, takes a little bit of time to do that. Um, we're on the second pass here. I'm only going in three thousandths at a at a whack here, so the total depth of cut for the for the engraving is six thousand. Um, it seems to make a pretty nice line, nice and heavy, easy to read, not too deep. I think the wax will fill it nicely, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, this is uh, a first attempt at this sort of thing, so. I expect this, I'll only be out here less than an hour this morning. And unless I decide to come back out, I have, I have extra dial blanks. <laughs> they were only, I think they were less than $2 each. They were very inexpensive. And I bought, um, I bought four of the four inch rounds and two of the 10 inch rounds. And 
they only charge one shipping charge no matter what, so I think it was like four dollars or something. It wasn't very much, so the whole thing was was quite quite inexpensive. I'm thinking the aluminum would look best with a brush to look, so I don't want to polish it too much because it'll be shiny. So I don't want that. That'll cause glare. So I'm thinking a brush look would be best. And I'd like to, you know, maybe brush it in a circular fashion, um, which would be, I'll have to build some kind of setup to do that. Of course, the lathe would do it. Um, if, I use it if I could just uh, glue it to a faceplate and do that. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's uh, it's going along good. I just uh, came out this morning about 15 minutes ago, set this all up, so um, it's not going to take long. Boy, those clamps you sent me are a treat, let me tell you. I use those every time I, I do any CNC work. They've, they've, they're worth their weight in gold. By the way, I haven't had one problem using the the tape and the and the um, the, the uh, crazy I want to say crazy glue, super glue, whatever you want to call it. It's this is a it's a bulletproof process so far. I don't know how many times I've used it now, over and over again, and never a problem, never. It's been actually very very much bulletproof process. And very easy to, to set up. Oop, I can't zoom in that much. These uh, center drills, of course, have a 60 degree point on them. So that's probably not ideal, but um, I think it'll be good for this. It, it should work out just fine. I don't know how the heck I'm going to do the large dial. That, that, that could be a problem. I must be about to the end of the process here. I haven't been keeping track, but... the compressor. Oh, that's the end of it. Okay, let me, um, I gotta shut the camera off for a minute. By the way, you know, you know, half of the editing product process is just shutting the camera on and off. But it is nice to be able to fast forward sometimes and, and do a few other things. Movie Maker works great, but you need Windows 7. And, um, Luckily, I have Windows 7 on one of the computers in the house, so that works out pretty good. Let me uh, let me shut this off, and we'll we'll um, we'll set up to cut the perimeter and drill the center hole. Okay, Walter, I'm back again, and. Um, I got the air. I got the air blowing on that. Yesterday, I used a little uh, cutting uh, cutting fluid WD-40 on it. Um, I don't know if I'll do that today. This seems to be going along pretty good. I'm using a. Uh, it isn't. It is a carbide end mill, so I hope I don't have any problems with that. Same end mill I used yesterday. I'm running the highest RPM I can get out of this this thing. So without without changing setup somehow and 
probably running about 2,500 RPM, and it's a two flute end mill. So hopefully that helps. And with that, sometime or another, I bought a bunch of two flute end mills, small end mills. I wish I had some 1 16th inch two fluters, but I don't. Everything I got is four flutes, and everything I got is carbide. So, not the greatest, probably, but. I got the feed at five, and the depth of cut at five, so. Um, I'm a little bit fearful of these soft metals after, I've ha after having trouble with the brass. I'm not in any hurry, let me put it that way. Okay, that completes that little task. That that's the longest. That that's the longest running little segment of the the software. So, what I'm going to do now, the reason for the air, by the way, um, first of all, uh, maybe my my uh, sacrificial plate isn't down tight on the backside. Anyway, whatever, you know, you always get into the tape a little bit. And um, I, I can imagine the tape's probably, the two, two layers of tape is probably about ten thousandths of an inch thick. So uh, you're not going to get through it, you know. I, I kind of allow two thousandths to make sure I get through because I don't want to have to deal with, uh, you know, breaking the metal loose. You know, so I like to have a clean cut all the way through. But when it starts getting into the tape, I use the air to try to blow some of the debris out of there. So I, I've never had a problem with it bogging down or getting screwed up because of that. But um, I, I just think it's a good idea uh, to be careful. So now I'm back to zero. So what I'm going to do is change tool pits and, uh, and cut the mounting holes. And maybe in the me while I'm doing that, maybe I'll pop that little outer ring off there at the same time. So I'll be back in five minutes or so. Okay, I'm back. Been less than five minutes. It only takes a few few minutes to to uh, change the tool bit. So we're ready to. Um, well, maybe hang on a minute. <laughs> One thing I forgot. I got to load another program. Well, let's get that done. Oh shoot. Oh, mounting hole right there. Okay. Regenerate the tool path. Alright, there we go. Oh, my God. 
cutting a really, really tiny hole for a number two screw, so that's the reason I have to use that teeny tiny end mill. Of course, I could drill those later, but this is this is easier actually. It only takes a couple minutes to do this, and it's done. And it's a clearance hole. It's a clearance hole for the mounting screw, so you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Probably got into the tape. Hopefully it doesn't cause any problems. So this is the end of the process. Um, I just use my fingernail to take the that little ring around the outside, there you see it. That's the little ring that, that we cut off of in the outer diameter. I just used my fingernail to prick that off there. No big thing. And that's, uh, that's the end. Go back to zero. I didn't turn the air on that time, did I? Seemed like I got in a hurry. I guess it doesn't matter. The air is not getting to get down in that teeny tiny hole anyway. Well, there we go. See if I, I'm pretty sure last time. Yeah, yeah, I'm all the way through to the tape everywhere, so. There it is, another dial partially done. At least the engraving and the cutting it to size, putting the hole for the the hand arbor in there and, and the two mounting holes, so we're good to go. Well, that's the setup. All it is is a sacrificial block there. A couple clamps hold it. Walter Macy sent me those clamps. And I've used those clamps over and over and over again. So those are a godsend. They're just wonderful. They're so easy to use and they they grip like gangbusters. So I've been so happy to have those clamps. Uh, thank you, Walter. Okay, I'll call off now and I guess I'll post this on YouTube. That's the easiest place to post it and you can watch it, Walter. Alright, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.